Oh, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I don't know if you can hear, but I'm like a little bit sick and I'm a little bit punch for time. Punch for time? A little bit rushed for time? I don't know. I just finished dyeing my hair and um, it's kind of still drying a little bit. I'm almost finished my makeup. I just have to apply mascara and then I'll be um, ready to get onto what I want to talk about in this video. What do I want to talk about in this video? Um, marriage equality. It's, it's pretty fun. If you're new to my channel, hi, my name's April. Um, I'd like to consider myself a fairly liberal kind of gal. And I mean liberal in the sense of like American's term for liberal, which is like, you know, ha happy-go-lucky. That's not a political stance. I mean like liberal in the um, American style of liberal, not the Australian style of liberal. In Australia, being liberal means that you're more kind of conservative. Uh, etc. I kind of like to consider myself, uh, you know, a perfect specimen of millennial youth. I'm, you know, I'm biracial, I'm, I'm liberal, bisexual, um, I haven't shaved my armpits in a while, which is forgiving because it's like the end of winter here, but, you know, what can you do? I'm just a perfect cross-section of every, like, kind of millennial stereotype, I guess. And, you know, Obviously, I, I stand for marriage equality because I'm not religious or like having any sort of like religious oppositions to marriage equality uh, and I don't have any sort of like prejudice against gay or homosexual trans people or anything like that. I'm not like, ew, they're gross. I don't want them to marry, um, whatever. If you live outside of Australia, I'm sure that you have your own uh, country's politics to, you know, want to pay attention to. For example, the DACA stuff in America, which fucking sucks. <laughs> Let me just kind of like fill you in on what's happening in Australia, just, just for a moment of your time. In our country, we still haven't achieved marriage equality, which is weird, because, you know, Australians were supposed to be seen as like, easy going kind of people. It's an issue that hasn't been able to be agreed upon in our government. So our government's bright idea is to hand that decision over to the people. So, you know, Australia, we're gonna be having a plebiscite, which is basically a vote of the people. Instead of the government like dealing with the issue themselves, they wanna hand the vote off to the people and be like, oh, well, see, Australia said no to marriage equality. It's not us who are the bad guys, it's yourselves. They're like, oh, this is society, we're just holding up a mirror to it. And you know what the mirror says? No to marriage equality. Essentially what they're going to be doing is mailing out um, forms to everyone who's on the electoral roll to say do you want marriage equality? Yes or no? And like that's how they're going to be dealing with this great big decision. And like decision is in quotation marks because the fact is that even if the whole of Australia say yes to the postal vote, um, the government can still be like, Ugh, yeah nah. Nah, not for us. Our postal vote is being fulfilled by the Australian Bureau of Statistics, which they're the kind of people who do our census forms. They're not really, I wouldn't say that they're not equipped to do a vote on this issue, but it's like not a binding vote because it's only done by the Bureau of Statistics. So essentially our government is doing the kind of equivalent of like you tweeting at like McDonald's and whatever and being like, how many retweets can I get for a lifetime of free chicken nuggets? And they're like 50k and you're like, cool. And then you get 70k retweets and then they see that and they're like, ooh, we're not going to fulfill that promise. That's kind of what the plebiscite is kind of like doing. And did I mention the plebiscite is going to cost like... 122 million dollars like that's just for the votes alone like that's just the ballot papers being printed and being sent out alone that that 122 million dollars is that's how much it's going to cost just to send it i've written down consultants pwc have put the full cost of the plebiscite at 522 million 160 million for the ballot itself 66 million to fund it yes and no cases and 281 million in lost productivity. That's the real kicker. It's gonna cost them like almost 300 million dollars in lost productivity. I can't fathom one million dollar, let alone like 
three hundred million dollars. That what? I guess the reason why I wanted to make this kind of video today, you know, with my hair still wet and only half of my makeup on, or like almost half finished, I just have to finish off this eye. What made me want to make this video is because like last week they started airing the first um, ad for the No campaign. Um, a lot of people were, like before the government said, let's go to a plebiscite, a lot of people were like, don't go to a plebiscite because if you have a plebiscite you kind of have to make sure that you're campaigning for yes and no so they both have to have like equal campaign opportunity and equal like opportunity to advertise their case i guess people were basically against having the plebiscite because of the fact that you'd have to have the yes and the no campaigns advertised on television and they worry that it's going to be detrimental to young like queer youth or people who aren't out of the closet because of safety reasons and stuff like that they said that it would be bad to run advertisements saying no to marriage equality essentially saying no to homosexuality or no to transgender people it's not the kind of stuff that you want to see on tv or like advertised on tv you know once that kind of stuff is advertised it opens up like the public forum like debating whether or not you're a human being and whether or not you deserve the right to marry someone that you love but like whatever but what made me want to make this video today is the fact that the first no campaign was run on australian television School told my son he could wear a dress next year if he felt like it. When same-sex marriage passes as law overseas, this type of program become widespread and compulsory. Kids in Year 7 are being asked to role-play being in a same-sex relationship. You can say no. The following news came out this week that one of the women in the ads was being like threatened. Someone made like a change petition or like a change.org petition because we all know that those are legally binding. Um, someone started a petition for her to be like for her to lose her job or like her medical practice or something like that. I don't really agree with I don't agree with anyone being like docs because I'm like Ugh, my own personal safety. It's it's more of a nuanced situation than that because of course no one deserves to be threatened or feel threatened or like unsafe in their own home, that kind of stuff. But at the same time, this kind of threatening environment isn't necessarily safe for, you know, queer or trans people in Australia, especially the implications and like the message that these ads have. Sure, you might be like violently threatened right now, but really you kind of are safe you're kind of in a safe position in society. You don't have a lot of people saying, you're gross, you don't deserve to be married, you don't blah 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 blah. The things that they're saying in the ad kind of has like ripple effects throughout society. So like, like the first woman says that like, my son was told that next year he can wear a dress to school. And it's like, first of all, that sounds like a really nice school if they're allowing him to like wear a dress, regardless of like what the gender roles in like, um, uniforms is. I remember it was like a big deal at my school that you weren't allowed to like wear pants if you're a girl. Even if it was like fucking freezing, you weren't allowed to wear track pants or like slacks to school. You had to wear a skirt. So if your son's going to a school that says that he can wear a dress, that's amazing. That's going to be a good thing. And it comes back to like this thought of like a boy in a dress is weird. Like Or like people who look masculine shouldn't be in dresses because they're traditionally feminine and that kind of like you know has ripple effects throughout society because it's like i don't know where i was going with that train of thought i'm sure that you know what i mean though like it would just kind of like make trans people feel more alienated and it kind of normalizes this idea that they're weird and they should be harassed or like threatened maybe it doesn't maybe i'm reaching a little bit but like i am reaching a little bit and because this is all basically hypothetical but it's like, a boy in a dress isn't a bad thing. And it's also the thing like, my my son is going to be allowed to wear a dress. That's only if your son wants to. If your son doesn't want to, then why does it affect you? Why do you need to go on TV and be like, meh, meh, meh. Also, these women are real, apparently. I thought that they were going to be like paid actresses, but ever since like this one's being like threatened with like getting her job taken away, I'm like, why would you put your real self in an advertisement? I mean, at least now they're going to have like, their half of 66 million dollars to hire some actresses for their ads but whatever then there's like the other woman who's like it'll be made to be compulsory what is going to be made compulsory like gay marriage is going to be compulsory i don't think that that's how that's not how like 
marriage equality works. <laughs> It doesn't work like that. And then there's like the third woman who's like, year sevens are gonna have to role play how to be in a homosexual relationship. First of all, I don't know what kind of class your child is in where they're gonna have to role play a relationship, let alone whether it's a heterosexual or a homosexual relationship. Like what situation are you gonna have to be in to role play a relationship? Is that like the new sex ed courses? Cause that wasn't, me. That wasn't the thing when I was in school. You didn't have to role play in the middle of the class, like get your clothes off and like pretend to have sex with each other. And that was the only way that the teacher could like teach sex ed. Like unless by role play, you mean that your child is in an actual play in drama. But if your child is in a play in drama, I'd hate to break it to you, but they're probably queer. Every drama kid is a little bit queer. I myself was a drama kid. I feel like half of the people in my class we're queer. So I don't really know what you're trying to mean when you say that like my child's gonna have to role play a homosexual relationship. That that doesn't happen. I think it also comes down to the fact that the slogan of this campaign is you can say no. It's kind of like they're trying to make themselves look like the victims like guys you can say no. We can have strength in this situation and we need to have the strength to say no to marriage equality. It is so bright on my face right now. It's weird. It's like you can say no. You're allowed to say no. Don't let anyone make you feel ashamed to say no to marriage equality. Bitch, what? Like you're not the victim of this situation. You're not the you're not the people who are being singled out in society saying like you can't do this, you can't do this. You're you're straight women in straight relationships having kids it also comes down to the fact that like in this ad campaign it was all basically like oh we women are here to protect our children from the like, gay people and having them like permeate our society with their gayness and it's like it comes back to that thing of like people always thinking that queer teachers and stuff like that like if we let a queer teacher teach in our school then they're gonna molest our kids they're gonna spread their gayness to kids and like that's not how homosexuality works as soon as you come out you don't start touching children you know it's not like homosexuals are the ones you know standing out there going door to door spreading the message of gayness that that really only happens with jehovah's witnesses and some old christian people in my area and i just kind of pretend that i'm not home and i make no sound and they're like Excuse me, ma'am, your door is open. We know that someone's home and I just, I'm in the bathroom. Ooh. Ooh. Don't know what I'm getting at in this video. I just think that it's, it's weird and really sad that we have to get to this point to vote yes. My camera just died because it overheated. What I was trying to say, it's like, I just think that it's weird that our government has to get to the point of being like, oh. We think that marriage is weird, but we're gonna pass off the decision to the public. See what they think about it. When a lot of the times, people are polling positively for marriage equality. It's kind of like, well, just fucking do it. Let them marry. It's always weird when they like bring in like, oh, the children and the sanctity of marriage and shit like that. When it's like, first of all, in this country, there have been like so many straight divorces, but how many gay divorces have there been? Hmm. Zero. Because there have been zero gay marriages. Hmm. But also, it's like, you're if you're trying to protect the sanctity of marriage and make sure that, like, no one's able to marry the person that they love, you know, if, if we let two gay men get married, then what's to stop me from marrying my dog, marrying my cat, marrying my cousin what i can marry my cousin now that's a that's what i imagine old dudes being like like well i can if we're gonna let the gays marry I might as well be able to marry my cousin now bing 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 you know divorce is still legal shit like married at first sight is being able to like be shown on television shit like the bachelor is able to be shown on television people just like flaunting their straightness just being like mm. I'm a straight. I'm allowed to marry whatever other straight person that I want. And there's nothing you can do about it. Like, campaign against The Bachelor. Campaign against marriage at first sight or whatever. Like, I think that's where I'm going to have to end this video because it's been a little bit too long. But um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to me if you want to see more of me. Comment down below if you have an opposing opinion to me. Um, try to be open-minded try try to be nice in the comment and then like maybe i'll like 
open a discussion with you, but if you're just going to be mean about it, like, come on, dude. Get some better arguments. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Bye.